What are the challenges right now? Getting people to move forward, like getting them off the fence. Really, you just, like you got a bunch of tire kicking clients, the motivation isn't quite there, you guys are running into that a lot. Having a hard time getting people to actually move forward to write an offer. What else are you guys running into? So inventory, yeah. perfect house, buyer expectations. Yeah. yeah, so phone calls, the grind. Okay, so home life balance. Specifically, you said interest rates and I said affordability. So is the objection is I don't wanna go look at anything because interest rates are too high? Okay, future uncertainty. If you can define the problem, you're literally 50% away from solving it. Like that's half of it. I'm a little nervous, I'm hesitant to get out there and look at stuff, or I'm hesitant to make a move because I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I don't know what's gonna happen with interest rates or things are too unaffordable, yes. Can I share with you the challenge inherently of the interest rate conversation? It's a very numbers-based and non-emotional conversation, isn't it? But the underlying of why they're saying it is very emotion-based, isn't it? Did you buy that shirt because you walked in the store and they measured you up and da -da -da -da, and they said, hey, look, here's the deal. Shirts aren't gonna get any better than this in the future, or hey, shirts might get better. Or did you buy that shirt because you need a new shirt, you put it on and went, hell yeah, I look good, all right. I needed the shirt and so I bought the shirt. Logic makes you think, emotions make you act. Inherently under future uncertainty, interest rates, affordability, is this conversation. You guys, why do people move? Because they have to. Okay, so kids, space. There's always inherently a motivation piece and a pain point there. Morgan says, love to talk about rates and guidelines and that doesn't move the needle. What moves the needle is, we're having a baby, we gotta move. I would pivot any conversation that started with, yeah, we're thinking about moving, but look, the interest rates are too high. You ever tried to ask a girl out back in the day, maybe before you were married, and she said no, and she gave you some weird answer that you couldn't figure out, like I had to wash my hair. Ladies, is that how it works? Is it because you had to wash your hair is because you didn't want to go on a date with his ass? Is it because interest rates are too high, or they just don't want to talk to you, or they don't think you have value to bring? So the conversation actually needs to be, you need to grab that sucker and pivot it back and send it back. And so how that sounds is, Yep, I totally get it. I've been talking to a lot of clients and interest rates are too high. By the way, what had you think about moving in the first place? The quicker you can move a conversation to motivation, the quicker you're gonna connect to somebody and figure out what's actually going on. Stop having conversations about interest rates. I've never won one in my life, ever. You have a client that they're out seeing houses, the motivation is seemingly there, you think you're right there, then they go home and talk about it and there's no, and they decide, they talk themselves out of it. Every client, every single time is gonna do this, every single time. So are you effectively having the price condition location conversation? By the way, or are you afraid to have it because you don't wanna alienate the client because you really need a paycheck? You don't wanna piss somebody off, you guys don't wanna have that tough conversation because you don't wanna get fired or you don't wanna alienate a client when the reality is, is that they're never gonna find this perfect house buyer expectation and you can't get them to write an offer without having that conversation. My, my number one concern with a client is never winning an offer. Although I do want to get paid, I know that here is the natural cadence of a client. Like I go show some houses and they don't want to write, no. And then I go show some more houses. Finally, I get them to write, yes. And then they have to lose a house. I'd say 95% of the time, the first offer that I write with somebody, I lose. I have to lose one house in order to get somebody a house. I just know I have to do it. So I'm not mad about it. I don't wish it were different. I know the process of getting someone to buy a house is they have to lose one house. So quit trying to win offers, stop it. Stop trying to win offers, just write them. So what that means is, is if I'm standing in a $250,000 home and I know I'm on multiple offers and my client wants to write 200, hell yeah, write the offer because I know I have to lose one house. Get that out of the way. Now I can actually get a paycheck. What's going on with the phone calls grind? You just get discouraged, yeah? Especially when you're building a business. Here's what happens. I dial the phone a hundred times. I talk to five people and one of them is actually like a viable client, yes? And when I say viable client, they're going to move somewhere in the next six to 18 months. So that means if I do this five days a week, I found five viable clients that are going to move six to 18 months. The reality is, is is of those five that are gonna move in the next six to 18 months, I'm probably gonna transact with one of them, maybe two, in the next six to 18 months. But if I do this, so that's five a week, that's it. You're doing all that work to find five people a week, that's it. And really, you'll probably get one to two closings out of it, that's it. Change the way you look at things and the things you look at change, that's 
six to ten thousand dollars you guys anybody here work a previous career where you made six to ten thousand dollars a week cool you probably wouldn't be in this room would you all right so that's six to ten thousand dollars this week it just doesn't show up way later does that make sense okay imagine if you did this week after week after week so here's what happens is you do this for 20 weeks in a row that's five months you now have 100 people that you're in follow up in a relationship with it took five months to find 100 people to be in follow up in a relationship with there is no sexy way to do it there is no way to shortcut it now you've got an established pipeline you get to top grade this hundred over the course of time and so here's what happens for six months it's like you might have one one to three closings yeah but then month seven pop you get two closings and then the whole thing starts to build from there and it cascades change the way you look at things the things you look at change ready i'm going to make 100 phone calls a day and let's pretend let's pretend that means that that month i made 2000 phone calls right and eventually that led to ten thousand dollars in income yes i don't think that's unrealistic what's ten thousand divided by two thousand dollars five bucks tell me if you don't want the steal. get out of real estate if you don't want the steal. all right here's what i'm going to do i'm going to drive to your house i'll brush my teeth i'll get dressed whatever i'll drive to your house when you're making phone calls and i'm going to stand behind you in the computer chair right and, and you're going to press dial on the on follow boss okay and i don't care what happens i don't care if you get cussed out i don't care if you leave a voicemail i don't care if uh, you get hung up on i don't care if they talk to you and they don't qualify i don't care what happens all you did was dial the phone and I'm going to stand behind you. And every time you press dial, I'm going to hand you a $5 bill. Would anybody not take that deal? That's what we do for a living. And you can't find the quality people without the quantity of work.